265 chapters currently out. The Blue Lock manga already has 29 volumes out in Japan, all displaying a unique character and color of their own. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at every single one of these volume covers, as I rank them from worst to best, based on their looks, lore implications, and mainly my personal opinion of them. Before we get into today's video though, I have a really cool and unique idea I want to try with you all, but if you're lame and just want to skip to the video, here's the timestamp I guess. In one week from now, I'll be commissioning an artist to create a custom Blue Lock volume cover based on one of your comments. Simply just comment down below an idea you had for a volume cover, and in one week's time, I'll select the most liked comment to be created. The only rules are that it must only be one in-universe Blue Lock character, and obviously keep it family friendly you heathens. Anyways, I hope you all have an amazing day, and without further ado, please enjoy today's video. Starting off with what I believe to be the absolute worst Blue Lock volume cover, it 100% goes to Yuki Miyakinyu on the front of volume 15. While I do hate this character with my entire heart, and I mean my entire heart, my main issue with this cover purely comes from how horrifically posed my man is. Instead of being mid-dash or celebration pose, Yukimiya looks more like Harry Potter than Harry himself. They even busted him up with two pairs of glasses just so we know how goddamn blind he is, which is just a crazy choice of accessories. The second worst Blue Lock cover is definitely Ryu on the front of Volume 9. Despite talking about how glamorous he is, Ryu has to have one of the most bland and lame covers I've seen in my entire life. The only significant things being shown about him is his long hair and black fingernails, but I just really felt like a lot more could be done for someone who speaks so much about fashion and stuff so frequently. At 27th place, we have the one and only goat of Blue Lock, Henri on the cover of Volume 18. She's looking all cute with her posting up all on the phone, also holding an iPad or laptop in her other hand showing how busy she is working at the Blue Lock program. There's really not much lore or character development around Henri though, so sadly I can't put her much higher on this list, but my respect still goes out. One that really disappoints me to put this low is Don Lorenzo, the new generation 11 defender on the front of volume 26, in 26th place. There's a lot of interesting details within this cover such as his golden grills being shown alongside with his ace eater tattoo, but the biggest standout is definitely his withered away chain. The new generation players all have unique chains on their covers, and Don Lorenzo seems to have pieces of it chomped away by his golden grills. Maybe his cover just feels too bland to me, but that's also more than likely the point to match the zombie vibes. To put us into our first milestone of the top 25, we have Mikage Reo on the cover of Volume 8. He's seen tying up his hair into a bun with an intense expression on his face, and as for his chain, we can see what I assume to be Nagi's aura or light shining onto it. Like most of the other volume covers low on this list, there's just not much else going on here that I can talk about, so I really can't put it much higher. The cover coming in 24th place definitely has to be Tokimitsu on the front of Volume 10. It does well to show his contrasting vibes of wholesome and horrifying by having him take on a nervous smile while still having a mysterious black aura seeping out from behind. There's really not much else going on though within this cover nor with his character, which is why it's earned such a low ranking on this list. As for who we have coming in 23rd place, Sendo Shudo on the cover of Volume 27 and Playboy will be taking this slot. Sendo's cover is one of my personal favorites because firstly, him having red and not blonde hair was a surprise to everyone, but a welcome change for me as a fellow ginger. The pose with him slicking back his hair while also gripping his chain is super unique to me, and the detail is also insane with his chains even showing shadow onto his jersey. He has a bunny on his glove too clearly shown, which might be a subtle reference to his playboy-like vibe and aesthetic. In the bottom left there too, his blue aura clearly shown glowing up his chain, more than likely representing the blue lock mentality and ego infecting the mind of Japan's U20 team. In 22nd place, we have Raichi Jingo on the cover of Volume 23. The cover for Raichi is super core to me because his pose is one of the most perfectly chosen for his character. Pulling back his mouth so we can see his sharp teeth while also pointing directly at the audience, his fiery nature is conveyed immediately through this cover. His veins and muscles are also prominently shown to reflect his position and skills on the field, but it's still pretty simple, sadly earning it a sub top 20 rating. The person coming in at 21st place sadly has to be Chigiri Hyoma on the cover of Volume 3. Chigiri's cover is another pretty bland one, as the first few seem to be, however it still has some hints like Bachira's to the story of his character. His right leg is obviously put front and center to show its significance, as it's a ticking time bomb from his ACL tear. Other than that, there's not much to say, but I do love his colors and character, so I can't rag on it too much. To move us into the top 20, we fittingly have Isagi Yoichi on the cover of Volume 1. The main character himself has one of the lowest ranking covers, sadly, as there's just not much going on here like the others. 
He's running towards the audience with an intense look on his face, but there are no hints towards his character, abilities, or anything specific. I understand it's the first volume, but I just really expected better. Compared to the other covers that showcase more about the characters, his cover just feels somewhat generic and just doesn't really stand out to me. His homie the Bumbling Bee comes in at 19th place as we have Megaru Bachara on the cover of volume 2. Tachira's cover does well to showcase his playstyle, goofiness, and scary intensity all in one page. With him chest trapping the ball or bouncing it up, it highlights his Brazilian flair and dribbling style with a really cool pose. His dead eyes and intense stare are also terrifying, yet they also reflect his playful and goofy nature just like we know him to be. This combination makes his cover a perfect representation of his unique character, though it sadly has to rank lower because the upcoming ones are just awesome. In 18th place we have Shoei Baru on the cover of Volume 6. Baru's cover is one I think could be done a lot better like the earlier ones, however despite that, I respect what we still have for him. There's not much interesting to it despite his intense stare and focus as he's depicted running for it, doing well to capture his determination while lacking the dynamic flair of high ranking covers. Maybe in the future we'll get a Neo Egoist League Baru cover with the Ubers jersey and his cool hair and design, which would do a lot better to showcase his character and style. Moving into an interesting pair at 17th and 16th place, we have Atoya Ira and Karasu Tabito, the ninja and crow. Although Atoya's cover features a cool pose, he just looks objectively ugly on this cover, which lowers his ranking despite his dynamic stance. Kurosu, however, just looks dope as hell on his cover, as he's depicted in a cocky pose almost as if he's shutting down the audience from seeing the logo. His confident stance perfectly fits his personality, however the cover is still pretty basic which is why it doesn't rank much higher. Moving on to 15th place, we have Nanase on the cover of Volume 29. Although he's a pretty uncared for side character, Nanase was given a pretty hype cover which came as a huge surprise for me. He's depicted sprinting forward with his hands out, screaming and celebrating at a possible assist in the PXG match. Either smoke or an exiled breath is coming from his mouth too, which adds to the intense nature of the cover. There's also a greenish light shining in the top right, which could possibly be Toshi Rin's aura, as Rin mentored Nanase and helped him find his value in the new Egoist League. Now at 14th place, we have the older Itoshi brother Sai on the cover of Volume 17. Sai's cover is the better of the two in my opinion, as it almost looks like he's floating or being lifted up, with the air blowing and his chains whipping all around. Maybe it's just his confident aura because his eyes are glowing with a calm, stern look on his face to match his brother's cover. Another interesting detail is that his chains are breaking away, which could possibly symbolize him breaking away from his dreams of being a striker to become a midfielder, but it also could represent him becoming closer to the world class stage. Sai, Kaiser, and Lorenzo all have far unique covers involving the chains around their neck, so perhaps to reach the world class status, one must fully unshackle their ego and become their truest form. Moving on to 13th place, we have Itoshi Rin on the cover of Volume 6. Rain's cover is pretty underwhelming for him in my opinion, but despite that, his glowing eyes and gaze still look really cool and make up for it. Instead of looking scary and hateful like usual, his eyes convey more desperation and sadness, reflecting the actual pain inside of his heart. He's also gripping tightly onto his chain, representing him holding onto his striker ego despite his brother's size switching to being a midfielder and breaking his heart. Next up at 12th place, we have Yo Hiyori on the cover of Volume 24. Yuri has one of the most unique covers in my opinion, with a soft pose and him holding the stone soccer ball tied to his chain. That's a really cool way to display how his ego and football have a complicated relationship, considering he barely wanted to play before his boyfriend Isagi hyped him up. Now we have our sadistic Hitoshi side like midfielder today, and let me know if you guys would agree below, but I wish alternative covers inside were better. We could see the unshackled versions of the players inside teasing more about their true ego and nature, but maybe that would just spoil too much. At 11th place, we have Gagamaru Gain on the cover of Volume 22. This one is sadly pretty plain, with Gagamaru's color being grey and the background matching it, making it somewhat dull in my opinion. Luckily the cover does make up for it with a cool pose, showing Gagamaru diving through the air, fetting for a goalkeeper. Although I wish he was wearing the goalkeeper jersey to make this cover a bit more unique, I respect the simple and calm nature of it, which is why it's ranked this high. As for who will push us into the top 10, we have Nico on the cover of Volume 25. Firstly, the pose Nico takes on in this cover is very fitting, as he's posing with his hand showing only one eye while his banks cover the other, symbolizing his control over the field as a watchdog. And most of the significant information about this cover comes from a Reddit post by a user named Tomotan, so make sure to check out their post if you're interested. Apparently, the number 25 can be read as Nico in Japanese. He wears this number on both the cover and in Ubers, and it's also his birthday, February 5th, written out. This man really has this number on lockdown like Ronaldo with 7, dear god. Nico also has an interesting shaped chain, similar to Corona. The Reddit poster pointed out that these chains resemble a particular kanji that stands for brow or forehead. The author really is a troll. In ninth place, we have the head coach of the Blue Lock program, Igo Jimpachi, on the cover of Volume 11. This cover is very interesting because it depicts Igo holding a holographic ball in his hand as he seems to be loading or breaking apart. 
I think this symbolizes him being a new hope for Japan, turning zero into one by creating an entirely new generation of strikers and football players. True to what we've seen of our GOAT, Igo is sitting in his chair with the dogs hanging out, crouched down in a pose very reminiscent of Light Yagami. An interesting detail I found is if you look closely at the top left and right of this, the chain seems to emerge from a cloud of fog against the white background. This possibly symbolizes him being chained to the past in his previous pro career, which might be a hint as to why he continues to stay within the football world and clash heads with Noel Noah. Moving along to 8th place, we have Nagi Seishiro on the cover of Volume 6. This cover gives Nagi an almost ghost-like appearance, which is fitting considering his aura is often that or death itself. The spookiness is enhanced by his glowing turquoise eyes, which were once green, and were also once blue. I wish the author could just pick a color palette and stick to them for characters, but I guess Bullock will take the JoJo's approach of intentional color swapping. Next up at 7th place, we have Kiora Jen on the cover of Volume 28. This cover depicts Jen in a crouched down, flexible stance, most if he's ready to pounce out at us. His pose likely hints at his center of balance and low play style, influenced by his hobby and talent in breakdancing. This cover surprised many fans due to his official color scheme, but to me, he looks way softer and less intimidating compared to his anime colors with black hair and red eyes. His softer look gives a different perspective on his character, and considering we also got his backstory recently, I think it fits pretty well. Moving on to 6th place, we have Corona Ranzai on the cover of Volume 18. This one ranks higher for me firstly because it shows Corona in an action sequence, running and looking up at it past. Though his small eyebrows might make him look a bit odd, I love the inclusion of his open mouth clearly to show his distinctive shark-like teeth. Additionally, Corona's chains seem to be a lot more squared off and box-shaped than everyone else's, possibly trying to hint at his fast-paced style and sharp turns. Pushing us into the top 5, the best of the best, I'll be placing the volume 20 cover with Alexis Ness very high to the surprise of many. Although I may have a profuse hatred for this character, this cover does an excellent job to give me another reason with his fake-ass smile. On a serious note, I believe this is intentional to show his personality being a facade, as he truly isn't satisfied with Kaiser. The chains close to the light and up front are being restricted by vines and fully grown blue roses, but if you look in the top left, a blue light seems to be shining upon a single wilting flower, or maybe it just hasn't bloomed yet. I think this represents the potential for Ness to grow his own ego and break away from Kaiser, but overall, pretty cool cover. Coming in at 4th place fittingly is the volume 19 cover featuring the new generation 11 striker Michael Kaiser. I first found it really interesting that the chain around his neck is transparent and made of some glass material. This choice was definitely intentional to emphasize the significance of his tattoo, as it's central to his character and personality. His pose is also designed to show it off, alongside his calm yet cocky smirk, and overall, it just does well to match his vibe while also hinting towards the lore. To finally break us into the big three, my third favorite Blue Lock cover has to be Kuragami Rinsuke on Volume 4. I know it might seem not as crazy or special as the rest we've been over, but honestly I just love him being depicted in a celebration pose. We can clearly see this man getting hype as hell, due to the excess amount of saliva flying out from his mouth and all over onto the cover. I feel like it just really fits the vibe of Blue Lock well while also getting you hyped up. This is also just once again why I like the recent Nanase cover so much, because it replicates this level of hype, but with an underrated character instead. As for our runner-up, second place is the volume 16 cover with Oliver Aiku. I really love how his background of the cover is dual colored, matching the color of his eyes and hair. His pose is also really dope, gripping his chain in a way that represents his captainship of the Japan U20 team. His captain's armband is in clear view and centered as well. The look on his face is menacing but excited, which perfectly fits how he acted during his matchup against Blue Lock. Finally, if you haven't guessed already by rule of deduction or just being obvious, my favorite Blue Lock cover by far, Ishiro Ryuze on the front of Volume 12. First of all, I just really love how dynamic of a pose they have Shido in on this volume cover, looking somewhat of a bicycle kick maybe? It's very fitting to have him in an acrobatic, upside down type pose considering the type of goals we've seen him go for. And of course, that's not all. His iconic demon wings in the background can also be seen alongside a devious smile, both enhancing the look while also matching his vibe perfectly. I just only wish we had a zestified version of Shido looking fruity as possible, but all I'm left to hope is we either get that or a dual cover with both him and Sai. With that being all 29 volume covers of Blue Lock, only two questions remain. Who do you all think will be on the front of volume 30, and have you commented down below a cover you'd like to see made? Maybe you wish there was a new Egoist League cover of Isagi with him in the Buster Munich kit, or a flashback Kaiser cover of him in the Away kit. Whatever it may be, drop it down below and there's a chance it could get commissioned into an actual cover. Anyways, if you watched today's video and found that you enjoyed it, please make sure to click that subscribe button, comment below your thoughts, and also feel free to join the community discord in the description if you'd like to interact with me directly. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.